Top fuel dragsters go from 0 to 60 before they even travel their own length and go from 0 to 300 miles an hour in less than a thousand feet. Just one cylinder of a top fuel engine makes more power than an entire Formula 1 power unit, and there's eight of them. But all of that power doesn't do you any good if you can't put it to the ground predictably and reliably. And these thousand dollar, 50 pound, 36 inch tall, 17 and a half inch wide bias ply tires made right here in Akron, Ohio are the only things putting all of that power to the ground. A couple of months back, I actually emailed Goodyear and asked about getting a tour of the plant where they manufacture all of their NHRE tires for this video. But even though I had worked for the company for a couple of years at that point, they said, yeah, sorry, which I'm not surprised about. They're pretty hush hush about what goes on in there. So I'm back in my house like always. When a dragster launches off the line, the exhaust alone will provide over a thousand pounds of downforce. This downforce, combined with over 6,000 pound feet of torque, causes the tire to squat and flatten out. This increases the size of the contact patch to over 250 square inches. That's larger than two eight and a half by 11 inch sheets of paper side by side. That's a lot of grip. And these tires are run at pressure sometimes as low as 6 psi, and the sidewall wrinkling like that is a response to the insane torque load that's being sent through the tire. Teams actually used to run pressures as low as 5 psi, but this greatly increased the chances of tires exploding. So the governing body, the NHRA, set a mandated minimum tire pressure to prevent teams from lowering the pressures too much. And as Driver61 put it, that compression and wrinkling of the sidewall that we see is very important because it helps reduce the instantaneous torque load, which allows the power to be delivered more gradually than it would be if the tire had no flex at all. This, along with the added downforce from the exhaust, is how these cars are able to get off the line so quickly with minimal wheel spin. But that's only part of the equation. You see, a big part of the problem when you're trying to build a tire that can sustain speeds over 300 miles an hour is building a tire that can withstand the insane centrifugal forces that it will experience at those speeds. This is one of the biggest challenges that has kept automakers from hitting that coveted 300 mile an hour mark with road cars for so long. Building a tire that doesn't just fly apart or deform is a big challenge, one that we'll get more into later. But the engineers at Goodyear are able to use this deformation to their advantage when designing tires for dragsters or funny cars. While the soft sidewall and low pressures allow the tire to compress at low speeds, it also allows it to expand and stretch out at high speeds. This compression and expansion of the tire effectively changes the final drive ratio of the car on the fly. At the start of a launch, the tire will shrink in radius by over 6 inches, and this translates to reducing the gear ratio by around 20%. And after the car launches, inertia will grow the tire to as much as 38 inches in diameter, simultaneously lengthening and narrowing the contact patch. This effectively lets the final drive ratio grow taller for higher speeds and also serves to reduce the rolling resistance as the vehicle hits terminal velocity. And reducing rolling resistance is really important here because these tires are made out of an incredibly soft and sticky compound, much softer than even the soft is compound that you would see in something like Formula One. This allows the tires to heat up very quickly and also gives them a lot more grip. And then get away with this because these tires only need to last for a mile and a half. This expansion effect, known as ballooning, is part of what enables top fuel dragsters to run without gearboxes. Through a combination of slipping the clutch, the compression of the tire at low speeds, and the expansion of the tire at high speeds, you effectively eliminate the need to change gears at all. Only dragsters and funny cars have the massive torque needed to effectively use and abuse such huge rear tires this way. It's a glorious and clever display of engineering. But as I've already said, building a tire that can stay in one piece without deforming at high speeds is the real challenge. Dragsters are able to use this to their advantage with their special one-off tires that don't need to last very long. But if you're building a road car that can go these speeds, it's a completely different ball game. In 1987, the Ferrari F40 became the first road car to ever reach 200 miles an hour. In 2005, the Bugatti Veyron would become the first road car to break the 250 barrier. And then in 2019, the Bugatti Chiron became the first production car ever to reach the coveted 300 mile an hour mark. There are a lot of reasons why hitting 300 miles an hour in a car is insanely difficult. Not the least of which is that the force required to push an object through the air increases at the cube of velocity. This means that while a car might only need 200 horsepower to overcome aerodynamic drag at 150 miles an hour, that same car would need eight times the power to only go two times as fast. But that's an easy enough challenge. Super high horsepower cars with incredible aerodynamics aren't too hard to come by when engineers put their mind to it. Hennessy, Bugatti, Koenigsegg. The main challenge, and why it took engineers 15 years to only go 50 miles an hour faster, is the tires. Isn't this cool? Maintaining deformation and managing heat at speeds as high while doing all the other things that tires need to do to be both safe and legal is almost impossible. Even though they're not the most complex component on a car, as the only part of the car that touches the road, they're certainly one of the most important. 
And at speeds this high, a puncture or a blowout will almost certainly lead to a pretty bad day. At 300 miles an hour, the tires on the Bugatti were rotating over 4,000 times a minute, or 68 revolutions per second. And in doing so, we're experiencing over 7 tons of force trying to rip the tire off the rim. Unlike a dragster, building a tire that can sustain these speeds without deforming or changing shape is something that has taken engineers years to figure out. The same way that a dragster tire stretches and expands at high speeds, a road car tire will want to do the same thing, especially super wide 355 tires like the Bugatti has. How do you keep a contact patch this big flat on the road while you're going that fast? Well, it was Michelin who were the first company to solve this problem. And the way they did this was by reinforcing the steel band that runs along the outside of the tire using carbon fiber. Carbon fiber can be up to 10 times as strong as steel while being five times as light. And staying light is very important here because if you start adding a bunch of weight to the tire, then the force trying to rip it apart will only grow. In order to make sure the tires would be able to withstand these speeds, Bugatti would take the tires to Michelin's aircraft test center in North Carolina. Using the same test bench used by companies like NASA, Michelin and Bugatti found that these new carbon-infused tires were able to withstand speeds up to 318 miles an hour before it started to crown the same way dragster tires do, which is insane. And along with having to handle warping, there's also a problem of heat. When a tire is rolling along a surface, it generates heat, and probably a lot more than you might think. This is due to the constant compression and relaxation of the tire as it rolls along, as well as the actual friction with the surface itself. And at speeds this high, the tires will be generating a significant amount of heat, so you need to make sure that your tire can handle that as well. And really, the best way to be able to do this is by making the tires out of an insanely hard compound. This is what makes those Michelin Cup 2 tires, the same ones that allow hypercars to reach speeds like this, pretty bad tires for everyday use. Building a tire this durable comes with a load of problems. Beyond not being able to get the Cup 2 up to temperatures on the street the same way your regular commuter tires will, if you get caught out in the rain with them, they're outright dangerous. You need to make sure that the tire remains usable for all kinds of road conditions and weather conditions while lasting a reasonable distance. If Michelin designs a tire that's rated for these speeds, they need to make sure that it can do it more than once. It has to be able to go this fast again and again. A completely different challenge than that faced by Goodyear when designing these giant one-off tires used on dragsters, where safety and longevity are a lot lower on the priority list, and the operating window is so much smaller. Of course, Michelin could have just made the tires for Bugatti out of an even harder rubber compound than the one that they ended up using, but then you would lose even more of that grip and performance that's needed for everyday use. They're operating so close to the limit of their performance that Bugatti can't even attempt their speed tests on banked circuits as just the extra g-force exerted on the tires from the banking would be enough to push them over the edge. It's a tricky balance that took Michelin years to find. In fact, cars like the Veyron and the Chiron have their tires glued to their rims to prevent the tire from slipping on the rim itself under acceleration. Dragster solved this problem by literally bolting the bead of the tire to the rim itself, but that's not really a viable solution for road cars. The technology behind these tires are incredible, and the way dragsters use the physics of the tire to their advantage is fascinating to see. But with more and more cars able to reach 300 miles an hour, it'll be fascinating to see how tire technology continues to develop. But if I'm being honest, I think we're getting pretty close to peak tire. After all, there's a reason those high-speed land vehicles all use metal wheels instead of tires. You can just only do so much with rubber. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.